Other than explicit method, which we discussed previously, we can also use implicit method to conduct numerical evaluation of a system's dynamic response. This implicit method is also known as Newmark beta method. Mathematically, we can expand any function to an equation that takes the form of Taylor series. Let's conduct the first order expansion for the velocity at instance of i plus 1. To ensure the result is not merely an approximation, the acceleration should be a function of time tau, which lies between ti and ti plus 1. Next, we can express the acceleration term as a sum of weighted acceleration at the instances of i and i plus 1. With this expression, we can substitute it back to the velocity equation. At this point, we have obtained the solution for velocity at the next instance, namely i plus 1. Now, let's expand the term displacement at the instance of i plus 1 to second order Taylor series. The acceleration is now a function of time tau cap. It is also expressed as the sum of acceleration at two adjacent instances. The only difference is, the weightage is now 2 beta instead of gamma for the previous case. We then substitute the acceleration expression back to the displacement equation. This time, we should express the acceleration at instance i plus 1 in terms of other parameters. By doing so, we obtain the solution for acceleration for the instance of i plus 1. Up next, let's substitute the acceleration solution into velocity solution. The purpose of this substitution is to remove the term acceleration at i plus 1 instance. Through a series of operations, an alternative form of velocity response is produced. Let's rewrite the equation of motion for the instance of i plus 1. In this equation, f i plus 1 denotes the external force applied at that instance. Now, we substitute both acceleration solution an alternative form of velocity into the equation of motion. An expansion of equation now can greatly help in subsequent action. After that, we rearrange the equation so that any term associated with xi plus 1 is moved to the left-hand side of the equation. Since we are in the process of defining the solution for xi plus 1, all other terms should be moved to the right-hand side. Finally, let's simplify the equation. At this point, perhaps we can introduce a constant called effective stiffness to replace the coefficient of x i plus 1. The displacement response at the next instance can be determined by implementing Hooke's law. From the solution yielded, we can predict the displacement response of the next instance using only current instance displacement and next instance external force. When conducting analysis, we first solve for the displacement at i plus 1 instance. Subsequently, we solve for acceleration and finally velocity. If the values of weightage adheres to this requirement, the solution will be unconditionally stable. Now, let's see how we can implement Newmark beta method in analysis. For this problem, we are using average acceleration, where gamma is 0.5 and beta is 0.25. First, we need to determine a time step. Let's take it as 0.1 second. At this point, we can extract the loading corresponds to each of the instances based on our time step. Also, let's construct another table to ease our analysis. We can determine our constant effective stiffness prior to the iterative analysis. At the instance of i equals to 0, the applied force at i plus 1 instance should be used. It is then extracted from the loading table. For the displacement, velocity and acceleration at i instance columns, we can just plug in the initial conditions. Not that, the initial acceleration can be calculated by using equation of motion. Now, we have come to the solution part. By using Hooke's law, we first solve for the displacement at i plus 1 instance. Then, with the product, we can determine the acceleration and subsequently velocity both for the i plus 1 instance. Moving on to the next instance, the force is still obtained from the loading data. For xi, x dot i and x double dot i columns, the values from those quantities for i plus 1 instance which we calculated during the time t naught should be used. 
the dynamic responses should be solved in the same way. The responses for subsequent instance can be solved simply by repeating the process. From here, we can have a better look at the effect of damping to the structural responses. At the end of this example, let's have a look at force time, displacement time, and hysteresis curve. The solution obtained using Newmark beta method is compared to the CDM solution we presented earlier on. Although some deviations are noticeable, both sets of solutions are generally agreed with each other nonetheless. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends. We will see you guys soon. Goodbye.